A few weeks back, I got to try TaylorMade's new ladies range of golf clubs, Kalea. And I gotta say, I was plenty surprised and not just by the performance of the club heads, but also by my performance with what was a very light shaft. Now for some perspective in this video, my sort of top end driver speed is probably around 95 miles an hour, which generally means I border between a regular and a stiff flex shaft. Now my current driver, as many of you will know, is a tailor-made stealth driver and it's fitted with this Proforce V2 high launch regular flex shaft. It is an inch or so longer than that that was in the clay that you've just seen me hit. And what I want to know in today's video is, am I better off with this 65 gram reg shaft or is that 40 gram light lady shaft going to be a real benefit for my own game? And pretty much any custom fit room that I went into, well, they pretty much start in a similar position. What is your driver club head speed? If you do know that, then the starting position is likely to be a stiff shaft for my type of swing speed. Is that a mistake? So those first two tee shots, well, they were completely different in terms of ball flight. It is worth mentioning that heads in terms of loft are also completely different. My stealth is 10.5, the ladies' Kalea is 12. So you can see the ball flight's very different. What I want to know is where have these two balls finished in terms of on the fairway? And they, well, he, quite surprisingly, not as much difference as I was expecting. And as you can see, there's probably 10 yards splitting them both. The interesting thing is we're playing in the winter. So virtually the ball is about all carry right now. And the spin number, which will be a lot lower, I would guess, from the stealth driver, it's not impacted on where it's finished at all. It's going to be a real interesting video because I have not genuinely collected dry ball data yet and we'll find out what that says a little bit later on in the video. My expectation is they're going to see a lower ball flight which we've just seen off those two shots from the Stealth. We're going to see a lot more spin from uh, that of the Kalea and I think overall the performance will be that without doubt the Stealth driver shaft will be the one that's best suited for me when we're only considering one thing. Well, they're both swings as good as I've got. Well, this is really interesting because what's happened there is we're playing into the breeze. The first two tee shots you hit, see me hit was down breeze. And what I think has happened there is you'll see the impact that high spin has on where your ball finishes. Because my guess is this driver has just proved why this shaft is right for me from a data and performance perspective at least. So as you can see, probably as much as maybe even 40 yards between the two balls, which surprised me a little just how much the difference was because when I first hit the Kalea ball with a really good swing, from my perspective, it was bullet straight, it was effortless. I really did think the stealth might have been up against it, but straight away, that lower ball fight that you can watch again, it hung in the air for a lot longer. I knew it was a lot longer ball and don't forget all carry again. So clearly that shaft did its thing. I don't really need to see dry ball data to show me that, yeah, this shaft is definitely doing its job for me. But there's a big consideration that adds to the dilemma, in my opinion. And that other factor is in fact control and accuracy because for me that is a big separator between these two clubs. I did say my swing was recorded around 95 mile an hour for club head speed on driver. But that's very much when you're indoor getting custom fit and when there's no trees, there's no out of bounds, there's no water hazards. I'd be really interested to know what my swing speed drops down to out here in reality when I'm playing the course. And then that factor of course becomes about control and consistency. So my question in today's video is how much greater control do I have with this lady's lighter shaft? And also how much distance am I gonna actually lose with my real swing out here on the golf course? And then there's one other consideration out here on the golf course and to my swing and that's called tempo. 
It's going to be really interesting for me to see the dry ball data in this video because all too many times we go into a custom fit and we do one thing and that swing at full tilt. So back to that driver club head speed, 95 mile an hour, probably topping out at just under 100 when I'm really sort of going for things and then I get custom fit for a driver shaft that's quite different to the swing that I take onto the golf course. That's a real high launching ball. I've just hit it down the left hand side. I mean, if anything, I'm used to hitting this bit of a cut and I'm hitting this thing absolute bullet straight. But the big difference for me that this offers, it's a shorter shaft, first of all, as well as being lighter, which explains that loss in distance. But when I first did the review of this Kalea driver, the one thing I noticed on was the tempo of my swing. This lighter shaft means for me that I can feel the club head a bit more as well. And I come very reliant on slowing the swing down and looking at tempo and rhythm. And it performs so well in the original review, which is why it's back out on the fairways today and back in for dry ball data later, is because what I really want to see, I've, I've said so many times already before, am I really making big losses in terms of accuracy just for gains of 20, 30 yards of distance, which is a lot, but I'd rather be in the middle of the fairway. You know, those two tee shots there, you see me hit the stealth driver as well. And again, down that left hand side, just conscious of leaking anything too far out to the right, but I'm really drilling the ball quite well today. But what it really shows, and I've never seen such a noticeable difference, is the ball flight is significantly uh, lower with the stealth driver. And it just goes to show whether it's be loft on the driver head, whether it be about the flex of the shaft, just the importance of custom fit and how much difference there is between, like I said, either the loft of the driver head or the way the shaft performs, because clearly these are two very different performing drivers right now. But it is in fact that control and tempo that's the big key for me. It was a thing that was glaringly obvious when I first tried this thing. I say control and tempo and tempo in relation to the weight of the shaft, control in relation to the length of the shaft. And I think those are two key factors. I feel like I'm stood with something like a hybrid in my hand in terms of dry, uh, shaft length with a driver head at the end of it to give me that boost in confidence in terms of distance. And when I get on a hole like this, which is super, super tight, I'm sort of asking myself, okay, so which driver would you prefer to have in hand right now? And I'm almost swayed to say, I'd rather have the control element that I've got in this Kalea. Super, super tight. And uh, I'd be aiming at the inside of the big fir tree with a little bit of cut. Let's see if we can do that and prove that this greater control is beneficial out here on the golf course. Do you know what? I really do wonder whether or not I'd have had the confidence to execute that very same shot with my own driver in hand. It blows my mind, to be honest. So clearly from what I've learned out in the golf course, that from a tempo, from a control, and from a higher launching perspective, then this club and shaft combination really does work. So that's 12 degrees aloft, a light shaft. This driver is all about optimal performance. Ball flight was completely different. It clearly goes further. It clearly spins lower. And it's really probably is the best driver shaft combination out of these two that's best suited to me. But what I want to know now is what does dry ball data tell us and what am I actually losing in terms of overall performance between A and B? Right, so I'm in here collecting data, which I'll reveal very shortly because I'm getting towards the end of the test. And I started off with the stealth driver and then moved into the Kalea. And the first noticeable difference, and I'd really encourage any of you to go out and try this, is when you switch between the two weights of shafts and then the length of shaft, the difference is just mind blowing to be quite honest with you. It really is quite odd. And in terms of the swing, I talked about tempo and what this thing does. It relies on tempo and rhythm because if you try and force it, things go horribly wrong. You've got to keep that tempo down. And if you've ever tried playing Hickory golf clubs, I'd liken it to that same scenario because what Hickory clubs do is again, they force you to swing the club with a rhythm and a tempo. Otherwise they just don't work. So it's, it's really odd concept to get your head round, but Either way of what you learn from today and from this um, experiment alike, 
then I would certainly suggest you try and give the two extremes a go. Right. What I can tell you is the tempo with this thing and the timing and everything else that I've sort of found out on the golf course is then relayed into here. I think we need to get into the numbers. Right, we finally got there. We've got some data to see how it compares to what I found on the fairways. And I think we'll just get straight into it and chuck it up on the screen for you now. Um, I don't think any great surprises, perhaps a couple of numbers in there that were particular interest. Stealth numbers um, were I'd expect them to be 140 ball speed, 15.7 launch, spinning around that 2000 number. Um, peak height 32, <coughs> excuse me, carrying just under 240 yards. That's pretty much where I'm at with driver. I'd say they're optimal numbers. You then go into the Kalea. The surprising thing is, was the launch angle in here was uh, a little bit lower on average, which, yeah, that confused me a little bit. Um, spin number was higher, albeit not to a ridiculous level. It was still kept under 3,000 revs. Um, that peak height was slightly higher due to that spin. So this thing's gonna keep rising a little bit through its ball flight, and I suppose hovering a little bit, you might say. And that carry distance was 228 as opposed to 239. So 11 yards difference in here recording data. But those 11 yards are really attributed to quite possibly just length of shaft because We've got an inch shorter in shaft, which will do two things. Obviously, we'll generate more club head speed with the longer shaft, but then there's also a debate to suggest that I might be hitting the center of the club face more often with the greater control from the Kalea shorter shaft. So these are all kind of compromises and considerations, and it's really about what it is you want from your game. I got custom fit for the Stealth Driver, and I think 100% sort of this demonstrates that this was the correct shaft for me. And in all honesty, I really like what the Kalea shaft does. I love the, the, the rhythm that it brings to my game and the timing and the tempo. Um, like I said, I definitely have to try just a little bit harder with stealth. So it's something that I would bear in mind. And certainly if my game was ever astray with driver, I'd certainly lean towards a lighter shaft to sort of bring that tempo and rhythm back. Um, so it's as ever, it's all a bit of it's a bit of a compromise, a bit of where you're at with your game. It's a bit of what you're looking for from your game as well. And they're all the considerations that most of us make with every club in the bag. But certainly it's a real interesting experiment. And my encouragement is this, when you go into a custom fit, maybe go in with, you know, kind of what you would fully expect to be trying based on your swing speed, like we discussed earlier, but then ask your custom fitter to throw a bit of a curve ball in and uh, just try uh, a lighter flex, considerably lighter, a lighter weight shaft, and just see what kind of a difference it makes. Because for a lot of golfers, it will without doubt help. I 100% try that lighter shaft, try the shorter shaft, try the lighter flex, and I think it might just help your game. Anyway, that's me done. I enjoyed that one. I always like a little bit of an experiment and then I always like a little bit of what I see out on the golf course, what I get in terms of dry ball data and trying to work some kind of uh, analogy between the two. And hopefully it made some sort of sense. Right, as ever, feedback. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you ever tried this kind of thing, what flex shaft have you got? If you found some big differences in changing shaft or whatever, let me know and um, I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching.